You're listening to Ask the Expert on News Talk 1010. Good afternoon and welcome to the show. This is Ask the Experts. I'm Barb DiGiulio. I'm filling in for Ian Grant this week. And uh, we have a really interesting hour ahead. Have you been injured by someone who was driving while impaired? Maybe your child has been the victim of cyber bullying. Jasmine Daya of Jasmine Daya and Company discusses 2019's top legal topics today on Ask the Expert. Jasmine Daya and Company is a highly respected boutique personal injury law firm based in Toronto. The firm strives to provide high quality legal services and a superior client experience. There are no upfront fees. You don't pay until they settle. Visit Jasmine Daya and Company online at jdlawyers.ca and you can schedule your free initial consultation. And we've got the phone lines open right now. If you have any questions for Jasmine Daya, personal injury lawyer, 416 872 1010. You can text us at 71010. Jasmine Daya, welcome. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. It's great. You and I have worked once together before because you were a guest on The Night Side, the show that I do during the week. And uh, it's great to see you again. Thank you. Great to see you, too. Is it is it a busy time in the personal injury law area? It really is. It's um, a very interesting and exciting time because there's a lot going on with the law and also with our winter weather. Uh, there's a lot more injuries, a lot more accidents. You and I were talking before the show, and I, I admitted something to you, and you said, let's talk about it. So it's like, okay, I will. I, for some reason, am, am somehow a little bit confused when it comes to personal injury law. What are some of the reasons, aside from the obvious? So we mentioned uh, driving while impaired, uh, cyberbullying. What are some other reasons that people would hire a personal injury lawyer? Well, Barb, for starters, I want you to know that I don't think you're alone. I think a lot of people don't fully know what personal injury lawyers do. Uh, So, you know, one person asked me recently, what exactly is a personal injury? If I nick myself shaving, is that a personal injury? Um, You know, (laughs) it is. Technically uh, it is. (laughs) Technically it is, but she wouldn't hire me for that one. (laughs) Uh, So personal injury law covers broad range of areas. Obviously, you know from commercials, there's car accident claims, but there's so much more that's covered. Um, Whether you fall on a slippery sidewalk or whether someone is harassing you by text, that's cyberbullying or could be classified as cyberbullying. If you're being bullied at school, there's schoolyard bullying. If you fall on on equipment in a playground, a, a child, for example, and that it's due to the faulty equipment on the playground, that would be under the realm of personal injury. Dog bite incidents, if someone's dog, uh, you know, is let off the leash and bites you, uh, that would be also a reason to call a personal injury lawyer. So there's so many areas. And, uh, you know, we could spend the whole hour talking about the different areas. But just so people realize, it's not just car accident claims. What attracted you to personal injury law? I'm going to be honest with you, Barb. You know, that sometimes gets me in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> so I had Great. no That's idea. That's perfect, actually. That's more fun. <laughs> Lovely. Um, I had no idea what personal injury was, similar to you, when I first started. Uh, back then... Uh, In 2005, in my last year of law school, I wanted to article in litigation. And back then, you may recall, internet was just sort of developing. It was dial-up. It wasn't even high speed back then, at least not in my house. And uh, we couldn't really research different areas of law like we can now. Now you just put everything in and there's so much information out there and it's so fast and um, easily accessible. So back then, I didn't know very much about personal injury. I just knew I wanted to be in litigation, meaning I wanted to be in court. And that's luckily what I get to do. Uh, But it wasn't until I actually started practicing that I realized, oh, I do personal injury. People are injured and I help them. And after I figured that out, I really fell in love with what I do. And I still to this day love it. No matter what kind of law we're talking about, when I talk to people and sometimes I'll say, you know, you should really talk to a lawyer about that, 95% of the time people say, oh, I can't afford a lawyer without even knowing what it costs to see a lawyer. And you uh, and your firm approach this in a pretty unique way because if I'm to understand it correctly, people don't have to put out money in order to come and see you initially. 
That's correct. So there's a few things at play here. First of all, we offer a free initial consultation. So if you feel that you have a claim and you want to explore this, pick up the phone, call us, or you can email us at any time, ask us questions. We can tell you right away if you have a claim or not. Um, And then we offer an initial interview for free. So people can come and meet with us also and and chat with us about their claims. We can help them explore different avenues and determine whether they have a claim and whether they want to pursue it. And uh, we're also on a contingency fee arrangement. So what that means is after we are hired, we're not... We're not getting paid by the minute, by the hour. So no client of mine ever has to worry about where they're going to get the money to pay us. It's never going to come from their pocket to mine. We're going to take a percentage of the settlement at the end after we have a successful outcome. Is that a set percentage or does it depend on the case? It's a set percentage, but it gets confusing thanks to something called the Solicitors Act. And there's fees, costs, disbursements. It's a whole discussion and a whole mathematical formula. And usually I would discuss that in the initial client's meeting with the client and make sure they understand um, you know, everything. And if they don't, we'll go over it again until they do. If there are people out there listening, I'm, I'm guessing that People have an opportunity right now, first of all, to call in and speak to Jasmine throughout the hour, 416-872-1010. But people can call in if they think they might have something and want to ask you, is this worth me pursuing? That's the kind of thing you would do in an initial consultation. We don't have the time that you would devote to an initial consultation, but you could certainly steer them in uh, the right direction if they call us right now, if they're wondering whether they might have a case. Absolutely. All right, 416-872-1010. Text us at 71010. And the other thing, too, I wanted to mention, uh, we want to talk a, a little bit about you because you are a mom. Yes. You are an author. Yes. You are a lawyer. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> How? What, my day only has 24 hours in it. How long is yours? <laughs> Same as yours. I just, I'm, I'm really blessed to say that... Uh, my three children are most of the time amazing, and uh, <laughs> um, you know I, I love everything I'm doing, and um, that's what keeps me going. How old are your kids? Thirteen, nine, and six, and I think they're probably all listening right now. Oh, excellent! Did you want to say hello to each one of them, or we'll just leave it at that? We'll just leave it at that. They're probably already <laughs> embarrassed that I mentioned them. <laughs> And now you have what's considered a boutique law firm. Does that mean there are just a few lawyers? You only take on certain types of cases? It means both those things. I want to keep my firm small because I want to ensure that we're providing um, a certain type of quality experience that I feel that if I personally uh, expanded and grew too fast, then you know I'm not going to be able to give that same attention to detail to each of the clients. So for me, I want to stay boutique um, so that I can ensure that quality experience for the client and ensure attention to detail on each file. 416-872-1010. You can text us at 71010. We are going to start with Sue. Welcome to Ask the Expert, Sue. Hi. Hi. Go ahead with Jasmine. What's your question? So my question is, my daughter was involved in an accident back in October, and she's uh, she... uh, had a concussion and some bodily injury, uh, has been going to therapy and that. But at this point, would we be able to still look at uh, contacting a lawyer? Absolutely. So was she was was she the driver or a pedestrian or a passenger of a vehicle? She was she was a driver. She was hit by a person who ran a stop sign. Oh, okay. I'm sorry to hear that. Um, yeah, she can absolutely call a lawyer. It's uh, never too soon to call a personal injury lawyer, so she certainly can. Um, she has two years to sue, so okay. she, she's she got ample time. I would never recommend waiting up until that last minute because there's certain things that need to be done by a lawyer, and waiting too late um, you know, can cause a lot of issues with trying to get that claim issued in time. Uh, but, yeah, absolutely she can call. Uh, just one other question is, does it matter that the person that hit her um, carried American plates? No. So everyone is entitled to sue in Ontario if they've been struck. Uh, even if the person didn't have insurance, for example, uh, your daughter's own policy will enable her to go through her own policy for recovery. 
Uh, so absolutely, she is able to sue. Uh, there's different tests. We could certainly discuss that in more detail if she were to contact me or someone else. I'm sure they would walk her through all the various steps involved. Um, but I do encourage your daughter and yourself, if you'd like, to meet with a lawyer and uh, go over all those details. Wonderful. All right, Sue, thanks a lot for the call. If you want to check out the website, it's jdlawyers.ca. Jasmine Daya of Jasmine Daya and Company is here for the hour. We're taking your calls. She's answering any and all questions you have regarding personal injury law. And like Sue, you may have a situation where you're thinking perhaps you have a case, you're not sure. Give us a call. Jasmine Daya is here, and she can hear whatever happened to you and let you know which direction you should go. 416-872-1010. Text us at 71010. Phone lines are open, and we will continue with your calls after a quick break. It's 515. You're listening to Ask the Expert on News Talk 1010. All right, welcome back to Ask the Experts. Hope you're having a great Saturday afternoon. I'm Barb DiGiulio filling in for Ian Grant and thrilled to have in studio with me this afternoon, Jasmine Daya, personal injury lawyer. Jasmine Daya and Company is a boutique Toronto-based law firm specializing in personal injury. It's not a volume-based law firm. Instead, they focus on providing high-quality legal services and superior client experience They treat their clients as people, not just a file. And Jasmine was explaining before we went to the break that she wants to keep it boutique size because she wants to be able to devote that time and attention to all of the clients. And we've got the phone lines open right now, 416-872-1010. You can also text us at 71010. If you have any questions regarding personal injury law, perhaps you've been injured in an accident, maybe uh, something to do with cyberbullying, maybe you are not sure whether or not a personal injury lawyer would take your case if you have a case worth pursuing. That's why the phone lines are open and you can call and Jasmine will help you out right now. 416-872-1010. Text us at 71010. Can we go right back to the calls, Jasmine? Yes, absolutely. Okay, here we go. Lewis, welcome to the show. Hi there. How are you guys doing? We're great, thanks. Go ahead with your question. Okay, my question is, um, I have an um, inheritance uh, issue going on and I have a cousin here in Toronto that's taking my sister's side and is threatening me with uh, certain issues if I don't take care of things promptly and honestly with my sister, even going to the point of telling me she'd um, um, uh, uh, call the um, tax department, call whatever city, whoever, to try and get my, to try and get me into trouble, get me into jail. Would this be an issue that, uh, close to cyberbullying, let's say? The... Instances of, of the harassment, are they on text or are they by email or how are they it's being by done? Voice. It's voice because I didn't answer the phone. She left a message. Okay. So, I mean, that could be cyberbullying, but there has to be some impact on you. So it's one, like from a legal perspective. So although you may be a victim of cyberbullying, it may not be enough to pursue a personal injury lawsuit on your behalf, unfortunately. Um, so you might have to uh, take other avenues from a legal perspective. Okay, um, but previous to that, for example, she did change my mail without my authorization, or should I say my dad's, email, uh, my dad's mail at that time, to her address. Luckily, I caught it in time. She didn't get any mail. So, you know, like that was another thing she did too. And nobody gave her the author- authorization to do it. Yeah, so unfortunately, I don't think it would fall under the personal injury realm of cyberbullying. So Mm -hmm. cyberbullying, if it's uh, texting you and harassing you, um, displaying pictures of you, um, slandering you in that manner, that would all fall under cyberbullying under the context of personal injury. But I think that what you've described doesn't. Um, But there may be other legal avenues for you to pursue with a different type of lawyer. Okay, so I'm just in the, basically outside of that area. That yes, yeah. yes, okay. unfortunately. Thank you very much for Lewis, the information. Have yourself a great day. You, you too. Me. Thanks a lot for the call. Is that something where at some point a person might go to the police about that? Yes, absolutely. Um, I've had clients in the past that have had, and, and a lot of cyberbullying these days happen with young people. And it's really unfortunate because so so many of our, our young kids, teenagers, they spend so much time online 
uh, social media is how they connect with people. They feel validated with all those likes on Instagram or how many followers or friends they have. And they're constantly looking at their messages and texts and who's contacting them. And what I see more and more is that these young people are so dependent on social media and online traction that they believe a lot of what is said about them. And I can't fault them for it, for feeling hurt. On the one hand, they're putting themselves out there, but everyone their age is putting themselves out there. And then, unfortunately, when someone attacks them online, um, you know, there's there's consequences and imp- that it Im- impacts the individual. And oftentimes, they do need to escalate it and go to the police and report it. There is really good information about cyberbullying on the RCMP website, and it describes exactly what cyberbullying is and what you should do. The one thing that really saddens me about the idea um, of cyberbullying, I mean, bullying has existed, unfortunately, since the beginning of time, and we always try to fight against it. And I think on some level it it will continue, hopefully not as much and not as bad. But it used to be you could go home, close the front door, and you were safe from the bullies. And now, because kids are staying connected all the time through their social media, it continues even in what should be the safety and comfort of your own home. Exactly. So I had one client that had to change schools because she was bullied so badly. Now, most of the bullying was not done in person. It was done through social media. But because the people were in her school... Uh, She or her parents and her together decided that if they moved and went to a different school, then perhaps this would alleviate some of the issues. But you're right. Exactly what you just described happened in that, yes, she moved school. She had a fresh start, but she didn't change her identity. So everything that was out there about her was discovered again at the new school. And she just can't escape it. 416-872-1010. 416-872-1010. Text us at 71010. Personal injury lawyer Jasmine Daya of Jasmine Daya and Company is here taking your calls until 6 o'clock. We will go next to Perry. Welcome to the show, Perry. Go ahead. Yes, hi. Hi, go ahead with your question. Yes, hi. Uh, it might be a little bit out of the realm, but I had a question regarding um, a family law issue that I'm having and the uh, order being stayed. I tried to bring a motion to change uh, last year, and the order was stayed over a, over a cost order that I cannot pay. And I'm just wondering if you had an opinion on that, how to move forward, as I need to access the court. I'm the wrong person for you. I'm sorry. I do personal injury, not family law. It's like asking a brain surgeon to operate on a heart. Okay. <laughs> so I would love to answer your question, but it wouldn't be appropriate. I, okay, I, Perry. So you need to contact a family uh, family law lawyer. It's funny. You must get asked all the time when you're out and people find out you're a personal injury lawyer. Do, you, do they ask you every kind of law? Dinner parties, cocktail <laughs> parties. Yes, they do. And, you know, when I was much younger, I used to want to try and help everybody. And now I have to, you know, I've... I've matured and I've learned (laughs) and realized that I can't help everyone as much as I want to. Um, You know, I I know what I know. I know personal injury law very well inside out, but that's my area of expertise. And you don't want to steer people in the wrong direction. Exactly. I'm actually going to do them a disservice if I try to help. Somebody writes in, I was hit by a car last year while on my motorcycle. The other driver was charged with failing to stop at a red and pled out to it. I was off work for a month. Uh, back without any long-term injuries. My motorcycle was a write-off, but I was reimbursed. Is it worth pursuing? From a personal injury perspective, if you want to contemplate a lawsuit uh, for pain and suffering, you must have sustained permanent and serious impairment. So when you say there's no long-term injuries, you may not have an ability to successful recovery from a pain and suffering perspective. Uh, But again, I would strongly urge you to consult with the lawyer in person and go over what um, your injuries are and see if you have a cause of action. 
And as mentioned, uh, you offer free uh, uh, consultation at Jasmine Dia and Company. Their phone number is 416-967-9100. You can visit jdlawyers.ca or you can call Jasmine Dia right now because we are taking your calls for the next half hour, 416-872-1010. You can text us at 71010. You'll get your mini free consultation here. And then if you wish, you can go see Jasmine Dia for a full free consultation. She will discuss everything with you. But if you think you might have a personal injury case or claim, give us a call right now, 416-872-1010. You are listening to Ask the Experts on In-Depth Radio, News Talk 1010. You're listening to Ask the Expert on News Talk 1010. Welcome back to the show. This is Ask the Experts. It might be a chilly Saturday afternoon, but we are great. We're inside. Jasmine Dia is here. I'm Barb DiGiulio filling in for Ian Grant. Jasmine Dia is a personal injury lawyer of Jasmine Dia and Company. We are talking, well, we're answering a lot of questions, and it's great. For those of you who have questions around personal injury law, feel free to give us a call. The phone lines are open, 416-872-1010. Text us at 71010. Unlike large firms who take on thousands of cases, Jasmine Dia and Company is an intimate firm, a boutique firm, offering a higher level of legal services and personal attention, and you don't pay until your case is settled. She offers free consultations. You can check them out at jdlawyers.ca, but she's here for another half hour. So give us a call if you have a question, 416-872-1010. And we mentioned the text board, 71010. Jasmine, there's an interesting question on the text board. Someone writes in, I was at a restaurant before Christmas. There was a flood in the ladies' room. I didn't see the inch of water on the floor when I went in. I went flying. It was very slippery. I hit my head and wrenched my back. I still have a headache and pain. The staff didn't seem to care, and the restaurant owner doesn't return a call. I've spent money on chiropractic and massage and still have a headache. Is there anything I can do? Yes, you need to call me. (laughs) Really? That's what you need to do. Yeah, we can definitely take care of this. I have a lot of similar cases, and I have had many over the years. Uh, So, yes, they owed a duty of care to you. You were a patron of the restaurant. Um, If they did not keep it in a safe condition and that caused you to to slip and fall and injure yourself, yes, you absolutely are able to do something about it. Um, You would be entitled to an amount for pain and suffering. You'd be um, entitled to payment for any out-of-pocket expenses. Um, If you had to miss work as a result, uh, we could certainly seek income loss. And there's a few other things. So, yeah, call me. Now, a question like that, a claim like that, would I'm sure people are saying, well, how do you prove there was water on the bathroom floor? How do they prove that there wasn't? Mm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> two ways to look at everything. <laughs> yes, there is. Give her a call. 416-872-1010 if you want to give us a call right now. But a reminder, the website is jdlawyers.ca. Another text that caught your eye. Someone says, I'm thinking about that man who plowed into pedestrians in North York in spring of 2018. That's Alec Manassian. Uh, Who do the people injured sue? Is there any government fund to help them get better, deal with PTSD, et cetera? So everyone that's involved in a motor vehicle accident um, in Ontario is entitled to get something called accident benefits. So what that means is you are going to go through your own insurance company to get access to benefits for treatment needs, such as what was asked of of us to answer. Um, So PTSD, they would probably need some psychological treatment, uh, probably want to talk it out with people, and that would be covered through accident benefits. So you go through your own insurance company, and it doesn't affect premiums. It's just the way that the priorities work in terms of which insurer to go to. If you don't have insurance, you go um, to any other insurers involved. So if you have insurance with someone in your household, someone you're dependent on, um, or insurance of the vehicle that struck you, like there's different different avenues that you can pursue to get those benefits. Um, And then separately, you have a lawsuit for pain and suffering against the driver that struck you. And if they don't have insurance, then um, again, you're going to look to your own policy to compensate you. And if there's no insurance there, yes, there is a government fund available. It's called the Motor Vehicle Accident Claims Fund. And it's set up for individuals who don't have access to any other insurance. And I think you just said it, but I wanted to confirm if you are the victim in some kind of incident and the 
say the driver in that case doesn't have insurance and you go through your own insurance, that does, that, there's no penalty for you. That's correct. Okay. 416-872-1010. Text us at 71010. Helen has an interesting story. Hi, Helen. Go ahead. Oh, hello. Yes, I had, and that's Helen speaking. Go ahead with your question, Helen. Thank you. I had operation done by Dr. Bais in Western Hospital on glaucoma, and I never had glaucoma. She took care of me almost four years, less three months, and then she she forced me to, to sign the paper for glaucoma, otherwise uh, operation, otherwise I'll be blind. So she did operation, and I'm blind because I never had glaucoma. So this is an area of uh, law called medical malpractice. Yes. And um, that it's very similar to personal injury, but the test, the standard in order to be able to sue the doctor is a little bit higher than just a straight negligence case. Um, so we would have to go through the medical records and see exactly what occurred, uh, but it's definitely something that could be explored, and it, it sounds like you have the ability to sue, but again, we'd have to go through all the records to see, are you going to meet the legal test? Is that something uh, where Helen could start with your firm, and then, I mean, medical malpractice, you said, is a different area, but is that something a personal injury lawyer would handle? Some personal injury lawyers also handle medical malpractice. Some choose to not. Um, my firm does some medical malpractice. We don't take on too many. Those cases um, often last a lot longer. And, um, you know, sometimes you need a different lawyer at a different firm that just does medical malpractice and devotes all their time and energy to mal- medical malpractice. Do pe- personal injury cases tend to take longer than other types, or does it just depend on the case? It depends on the case. Um, I think that uh, some individuals are surprised at how long some cases take. Uh, you know, I want to move my files as fast as I can. There's no point in having files on the shelf. I'd rather have my client satisfied and get compensated quickly. And I would also like to get paid too. So, you know, there's incentive for me to move the file as fast as I can. But unfortunately, sometimes there's backlogs uh, at the court. I shouldn't say sometimes. There's always backlogs at the court. Um, and in addition to the court, there's certain there's certain uh, steps, procedures that need to occur properly, and those take time. You mentioned earlier in the show that... Um, You got into a certain type of law. You ended up in personal injury law because you wanted to be in the courtroom. Does it, is it still, does it like energize you every day to be in the courtroom? I'm not actually in the courtroom every day. Um, I do a lot of things outside of the office every day, and that energizes me. I love that every day is a new, exciting day. My husband asked me what I'm doing tomorrow, where I'm going to be, and I usually don't know. (laughs) I have to look at my phone and figure out what my schedule is because it's quite chaotic. Um, But we're at court reporters every day. Um, Not every day, but every few days I'm at a court reporter's office. There's mediations. There's pretrials at court. There's motions that need to be argued. There's hearings that I attend. And that there's all sorts of steps and proceedings that make my job really interesting. 416-872-1010. Text us at 71010. Jasmine Daya is here. Jasmine Daya and Company, a highly respected boutique personal injury law firm based in Toronto. She is taking your calls if you think you might have a personal injury claim or case. If you go see her in the office, she will give you a, a free Um, initial consultation, but you can start right here if you want to find out whether your case is worth pursuing. Here is Delroy. Welcome to the show, Delroy. Hi, how are you doing, Barb? Good, thank you. Go ahead with your question for Jasmine. I have so many, but there's one one that I would like to focus on. I was at, uh, I went to a bank in a mall in Brampton to complain because the, um, the bank, somebody from the bank called my landlord, right, and uh, gave personal information about me, and I went to the bank to complain, right? The bank manager, we had issues prior, so we didn't like each other. The bank manager, long story short, called security. Security beat me up, put me in jail. Wow. Um, uh, After I was released from jail, I thought I could um, handle it. I went home, and I was having nightmares. 
So I went to the hospital. They kept me for um, nine days. I was I was um, I was diagnosed with PTSD and other stuff. And I, now I'm now I'm trying to now I'm trying to sue and I can't find anybody to to start it. And it so happened that the bank I'm not going to name them because I'm, I'm sure you don't want me to name them, right? They, uh, that same bank is still carrying on degrading my defaming my character and, and, and treating me like I'm a, like I'm an idiot. All right, let's see what uh, Jasmine has to say. Well, first, I'm I'm sorry to hear about the situation. You know, it's it sounds very unfortunate. It seems that you're still continuing to suffer from this issue. Um, so I'm sorry to hear that. In terms of the issue itself, a security officer does not have any rights beyond that of an ordinary citizen. That means they can't just beat you up. Um, there has to be. Um, a request that you leave the bank and then they can use something called reasonable force to make you leave if you refuse to leave upon their request. Uh, But it's highly unlikely that beating you up in the way that you describe was um, something that would be normal in in the circumstances. Um, So it seems that you have the ability to sue. However, uh, we'd have to go through all the details of the case and the chain of events. And I know for purposes of right now, this is a quick phone call, um, but we could certainly do that in person. JDLawyers.ca is where you can find out more information. Jasmine, Daya, and company. We'll give out the company uh, phone number a little bit later on right now. I don't want it to be too confusing. I want to give out our phone number because Jasmine is here right now to take your calls on personal injury law and whether or not you might have a case or a claim. 416-872-1010. Text us at 71010. I'm Barb DiGiulio filling in for Ian Grant. Jasmine Daya is here. You're listening to Ask the Expert. You're listening to Ask the Expert on News Talk 1010. Welcome back to the show. Great to have you along. This is Ask the Expert. I'm Barb DiGiulio. I'm filling in for Ian Grant this week. Ian's a little under the weather, so if you're listening, Ian, get better soon. And joining me in studio, Jasmine Daya of Jasmine Daya and Company. And they are a highly respected boutique personal injury law firm based in Toronto. The firm strives to provide high quality legal services and a superior client experience. Now, this is interesting for all of you who think I can't afford to go see a lawyer. There are no upfront fees. You don't pay until they settle. Visit Jasmine Daya and Company online at jdlawyers.ca. You can schedule your free initial consultation. She is here right now taking your calls. And I've seen one text so far, somebody saying that they can't get through. The phone lines are open. I think there's something a little wonky going on with our phones, but people are getting through. So call us at 416-872-1010. Text us at 71010. If you have a question for Jasmine Daya, perhaps you think you might have a personal injury case or claim and you're not sure, she can help you out with that right now. And before we get uh, back to the phone, somebody texted in a question, Jasmine, and this one's really interesting. Uh, The person writes in, can a client find out what the settlement was worth once it's settled? So you don't take money up front, you take a percentage once it's settled. And this person is asking, does the client ever find out the total amount of the settlement so they know the exact amount that you took. So if you are settling a file, and this is without a trial, so somewhere along the line you've settled, everyone has to be on board. No lawyer is permitted to just take funds from you. So you as a client are completely entitled and you have the right and you should know exactly what that breakdown is. But going back to the settlement, if it's settled somewhere along the line without a trial, you have to sign something generally called a full and final release saying that uh, you agree to this amount. So it discloses the amount right on that agreement. And usually that agreement is for the person you sued because they want to make sure you're not coming after them for more. So it's going to be right on that release. And then secondly, when your lawyer receives the settlement check, they have to give you a detailed account that outlines what was paid for fees, what was paid for HST, what were the disbursements, and what the client is getting. So yes, you absolutely have the right and should have seen the full amount as well as get a detailed account on a breakdown of funds and where all of them are going. When you are in the process of settling a case, 
Does the client not have to agree to the amount being settled before it is settled? They absolutely have to agree. A lawyer could get sued for accepting a settlement without instructions. So it is my practice to always discuss with the client, um, this is what was offered. I recommend you take it or I recommend you don't or I think we should make a counter offer. Um, but regardless of my recommendations, I'm always going to first outline this is the amount that was offered. This is what you're going to get in your pocket after all is said and done. Then I go into the discussion about my recommendations and then I take instructions from my clients. It is not my lawsuit. Uh, they're they're in charge. The client is my boss to a certain level. I am reporting to them and taking instructions to them, and I must follow what they say. And lawyers are not in the business of keeping their clients in the dark. You can't legally, you can't do that. Ethically or legally, we have an obligation to our clients to act in their best interests, and it's their case. They're entitled to know. 416 872 Text us at 71010. Jasmine Daya is here. Jasmine Daya and company. Dawn is on the line. Thanks for holding, Dawn. Go ahead with your question. Good uh, Good evening. Um, my question is, is, I'm on social assistance. I got involved uh, in a personal injury where I slipped and broke my arm. And for years, I've been paying into uh, an accident uh, benefit thing. And so I made the claim, and they, uh, they, you know, they authorized it. And now my social uh, social security uh, social benefits people say that uh, uh, they're gonna they're claiming that as income, and I don't agree with that. So the pain and suffering that I've all been through as well. I think what you're referring to is Ontario disability benefit. Is that right? Uh, that's right. So yeah, social benefits. Yeah. Yes. Welfare. So. Yes. Yeah, so Ontario Disability Support Program is, an, is a really good program that we have in Ontario to help people who have been injured. It provides assistance to those in need when uh, they might not have income. Um, and it seems that that's what you're receiving. And yes, um, the way it works is that if you are on that program, it's because you don't have any other form of income. Um, so you would probably have a case uh, caseworker assigned from ODSP, the Ontario Disability Support Program, and they'll determine if you have any, any other forms of income. And if you do, then usually there's an offset. And while I recognize where you're coming from, it's, you know, it doesn't seem fair. It's, it's unfortunately, that's the law. So you'd have to talk to the uh, caseworker at ODSP about it. Fair enough. I just want, yeah, it doesn't seem fair, but, it, you know, I guess you're right. You're right. Okay, Don, but it's, you know what? It's good to get confirmation on that. Absolutely. Yeah, you can definitely talk to the caseworker about that. All right. Um, we have a couple of minutes left, and the phone lines remain open at 416-872-1010. Before we went on the air at the beginning of the show, you and I were talking about distracted driving and the changes mm -hmm. that came in January 1st. Did you want to comment? Is there stuff people should know? Distracted driving is a <laughs> hot topic right now. Yes. Put the phone away. Uh, you definitely want to keep your phone in your purse, your bag, somewhere far away, out of out of sight. You don't want it to light up and then you're you're wanting to see what was that message? Who's contacting me? Did someone like my post. Um, <laughs> just want to keep it really far away because there's a blitz going on in our city right now. And what they are doing is um, the police are in streetcars or in unmarked vehicles. They're, they're peering into your vehicle to see if you're using your device. And they're not just doing it to be a big pain in the you know what. They're doing it because there's an unfortunate statistic. In 2017, there were more people that died as a result of drivers that were distracted than drivers that were impaired. And that's what our city is trying to clean up. We want to get rid of that statistic. You know, I think there's a little bit of gray area, or perhaps it's just in our understanding of the laws. If you have your phone out somewhere, but you're not looking at it, you're not touching it, I mean, can, can you still get in trouble? You can, um, but because it's kind of like a he said, she said, you know, were you looking? Were you using it? Was it by your lap? That's why my advice is to shove it 
down in a deep, dark <laughs> pocket, put Where in your you? glove box <laughs> so they can't be seen. I have a, I had a client. He's probably listening right now. Um, but he came to my office a couple of weeks ago, and he was telling me about something that happened to him. This is interesting for your listeners. Okay. Uh, so he said he had his phone on the front passenger seat, and someone in front of him stopped abruptly, and so he slammed on his brakes. And there was no accident, but his phone flew from the passenger seat to the front. And he was at a stoplight, so he reached to pick it up Uh and put it back where it was. But a police officer saw this and assumed that he was on the phone. Now, this was before January 1st. He didn't receive a ticket, um, you know, but he was upset because the police officer mouthed to him, uh, get off your phone. And he's like, I wasn't on my phone. (laughs) And, um, you know, he's wondering now, would I have gotten a ticket? Well, we don't know if he would have gotten a ticket or not. What I can say is let's just not get into the gray area because you don't want to deal with facing um, a license uh, suspension. A lot of people need their vehicles to get their kids to school or to get to work, and you just don't want to get into that problem. I know someone who was in a car accident and the police, uh, for some reason, police were right there and said, where's your phone? She said, it's in my purse in the back seat. Like, And she said from then on, she realized it's just good to put it where you can't reach it while you're driving. Exactly. And if you need to be on a call, make sure your phone is connected to the Bluetooth. Not much time left. Uh, let's. Do you want to talk about impaired driving, cannabis laws? What would you like to touch on, if anything? You know what I think we should do? We've got some great messages here coming in. I'd, I'd like to satisfy the listeners if we can. Sure. Which one did you want to take um, on? Well, we have an interesting question about how long does it take from filing a claim to receiving an outcome? Um, That's an excellent question, and it differs for every single claim out there. So sometimes I will meet a new client, I'll be retained on a case, and within a few months, the case settles. Then I've got some clients that the same situation, I'm retained on a case, it could take a few years. And it really depends on the case at hand. It also depends on who is retained on the other side, who the insurance company is on the other side, who the lawyer is on the other side. There's so many factors that play a role. Uh, so it's it's a difficult question to ask. What I can say is that most of my clients are settled, or most of my files, most of my clients walk away with a, a resolution between um, a few months to a maximum of about four years. Okay, and and you were mentioning earlier, medical ones can tend to take a little bit longer. Medical ones can take longer, and you know there are some personal injury cases that could take longer than four years. You know, five or six years. Um, there was one client that came to me because he had a file from arising from a car accident that was eight years prior. And I looked at that file and I was deeply concerned about what I saw. This was not a case that should have taken that long, but, uh, you know, you might want to get another opinion if you have concerns. All right. We are out of time. This hour has gone by so quickly. If you have been injured in an accident or physical assault or you have questions about personal injury law, contact lawyer Jasmine Daya, partner of Jasmine Daya and Company, where you are more than just a file number for your free consultation. Call 416-967-9100 or visit jdlawyers.ca. This has been so much fun. As always, Barb. <laughs> it's been a pleasure. Thanks so much for having me. Thank you so much, Jasmine Daya. I'm Barb DiGiulio filling in for Ian Grant. This has been Ask the Experts on In-Depth Radio, News Talk 1010.